In this demo, I'm looking at how you can install multiple Windows operating systems on a single PC and easily switch between them. We won't be using virtualization and we won't be partitioning the hard drive into smaller partitions. Instead, I'm going to show you a method of dual booting that you've probably never seen before and the beauty of it is that it's very simple to implement and you can add or remove Windows operating systems at any time. So, why would you want to install multiple Windows operating systems? Well, it means that you can have one computer, but for several purposes. Maybe you want to separate your work PC from your gaming PC, or you just want to experiment with a different version of Windows. Another idea might be to have a separate OS for testing software, so that you don't have to mess up your production PC or gaming PC. You can have as many Windows installations as your hard disk can take, just note that you'll only be able to use one at a time. You'll need to reboot the PC when you want to switch operating systems. Note, though, that you can access any of the operating system's file systems, regardless of which operating system you happen to be booted into. The benefit of using this method over virtualization is that you get the full native access to the hardware, which is important for things like gaming or video editing. You probably wouldn't want to do those activities on a virtual machine. Each operating system is independent of the others, and you can still take advantage of virtualization if you want. Just install your favorite hypervisor on any of the operating systems. So, how does it work? Let me give you an example. You've already got Windows installed, and for this example, let's say that you're running Windows 10. We'll call your current version of Windows the Parent OS, or Host OS. This is the main OS which is installed normally, just like any other Windows PC. This main OS will be ever-present. We can't remove this one, as it's the main parent OS. For any additional operating systems that we install, let's call them a child OS, or a guest OS. We can easily add and remove any child OS's and you're only limited by the size of hard disk that you have in the PC, as we'll need disk space for each operating system that you install. So the larger the hard disk that you have, then the more operating systems you'll be able to install. Remember earlier when I said we aren't going to use virtualization? Well, that was true, but we will need to create a virtual hard disk to install our additional operating system onto. All this means is that we are creating a virtual disk file, and it'll act just like a normal hard disk, and we'll install another version of Windows onto that virtual disk. For any additional operating systems that we install, we just create a new virtual disk for each one. This means it's simple to add or remove a Windows OS at any time. If we decide that we don't want that OS anymore, then we can simply delete the hard disk file from the main hard disk, and it's as simple as that. So let's install our first additional operating system. I'm on a PC which has Windows 10 installed, this is the parent OS for this PC. I'm going to install Windows 11 as an additional operating system. One quick tip before we go any further is to go into your device manager and make a note of some of the key devices in your system. This is just in case you need to download any driver software for the new operating system so you'll know what devices to download the drivers for if Windows doesn't automatically install them for you. Okay, first I need to create a virtual disk. So I'll right click on the Windows Start button and choose Disk Management from the list. Don't worry, we're not going to be resizing any partitions, we're just using Disk Management to create our first virtual disk. I'll highlight my current Windows partition, then click on the Action menu, then choose Create VHD. I'll click on Browse to choose a location to store the virtual disk. So I'll browse to my C drive and I'm going to create a folder called VHDX. And then inside the VHDX folder, I'll name the disk file windows11.vhdx. You'll want to make a note of this file name and path, as we'll need it later. When it comes to specifying the size of the virtual disk, consider that you'll need around 20 to 30 gigabytes for a typical Windows operating system, and that you'll want to factor in future Windows updates, plus any software and data that you want to install. If you're undecided on the size, I recommend starting off with a small hard disk, as it's really easy to increase this later if you need more space. It's not so easy to make a drive smaller once it's already been created. So always start with a smaller size and increase it later as and when required. So I'll make this drive 50 gigabytes in size. We then need to choose the disk format. Either of these options are fine for an operating system. VHDX is the newer of the two formats and supports disks larger than 2TB and it's also resilient to power failures, so I'll choose that one. We then need to choose the hard disk type. Choosing a fixed size will allocate the full size of the disk up front, and choosing dynamically expanding will create a small disk, which will then grow as you add data to it. I'll choose dynamic, which will be more efficient, as I might not use all the disk space available, so there's no point in allocating disk space up front if I don't use it. I'll click on OK to create the virtual disk, which then appears in disk management as if it was a real disk. And if we look at the disk file in File Explorer, 
we can see that although it's a 50 gigabyte disk it's only four megabyte in size at the moment as there isn't anything on the disk yet but the file size will increase as we start adding data to it we're now ready to install windows 11 onto this new virtual disk so i'll insert my windows 11 installation media and restart the pc to start the installation i've booted up into the windows setup program i'll click on next then install now I'll accept the license terms and click next. We need to choose a customized install. We then need to choose where to install Windows. You'll notice that you'll only see the disks and partitions for the existing Windows 10 parent OS. We need to attach the new virtual disk that we just created. So to do that, we press shift and F10 to open a command prompt. First, I'll just check that I can see the virtual disk file that I created earlier. So I'll change to the C drive and then change to the VHDX folder. If we type DIR, we should then see the Windows 11 virtual disk. Next, we need to go into Disk Part, which is Microsoft's disk partitioning tool. I'll select the virtual disk by entering the command select vdisk file equals c colon backslash vhdx backslash windows 11.vhdx, which is the name and path of the virtual disk that I created earlier. You should see a confirmation message to say it was successfully selected. If you get an error at this point, then check that the path and file name is correct. You can enter the command list volume to confirm the drive letter for your Windows partition. It's normally C drive, but sometimes it might get picked up as a different drive letter during Windows setup. Next, we need to attach the disk by entering the command attach vdisk. You should get a confirmation message to say that the disk was successfully attached. We can then exit disk part and close the command prompt. If we then click on refresh and scroll down, we should see the new 50 gigabyte disk is attached. Select the new disk and click next. Windows 11 will then install normally just like it would on any other PC. I'll skip ahead through the rest of the installation just for the purposes of the video. So that's the installation of Windows 11 now complete. Let's restart the PC and see how we select which operating system to use. So whenever you turn on or restart your PC, you're now greeted with a boot menu. The new operating system will become the default option to boot into and there's a 30 second countdown timer. Once the timer gets to zero, it will automatically boot into the default OS or you can just manually select the OS to boot into. You can also go into options where you can change the countdown timer or change which operating system should be the default choice. Let's go ahead and boot into the new Windows 11 OS. From here, it just works like any normal PC. If you didn't already know that the OS was installed on a virtual disk, then you wouldn't be any the wiser. If we go into File Explorer and look at the drives, the C drive is the new Windows 11 OS and the D drive is the Windows 10 parent OS. I like to rename the disk to make it easier to distinguish between them. So you might rename the C drive to Windows 11 and the D drive to Windows 10 and you can access the files on both drives. If we go into System Settings and click on the Advanced tab, then click on the settings tab under startup and recovery. You can also change the default OS and countdown timer from here. You can be more specific with the countdown timer and this is available regardless of which OS you're currently booted into. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly repeat that process and install another OS. This time I'll install Windows 8. By the way, you are able to install more than one copy of the same OS. It doesn't always need to be a different OS than the parent OS. For example, you could have two or more installations of Windows 10 or two or more installations of Windows 11, or you can just mix and match. It's irrelevant which OS is installed, although I would recommend avoiding Windows 7, not least because it's no longer a supported operating system and won't receive security fixes, but because it doesn't fully support secure boot on UEFI systems. So it's highly likely that it will not boot into Windows if your PC is currently configured with a UEFI BIOS. Okay, I've now added Windows 8.1, so I've got three operating systems installed. If you decide you no longer need one of the operating systems that you've added, then you can simply delete the virtual disk file from the main hard disk. Browse to your main parent OS, which in my case is the Windows 10 OS, and navigate to the VHDX folder containing your virtual disks and simply delete the OS that you no longer want. I'll delete the Windows 11 OS. That means that OS will be completely gone and you'll recover the disk space back to the main hard disk and parent OS. The boot entry in the boot menu will still be there so we need to delete that manually. To delete an option from the boot menu, open a run prompt and enter msconfig. Click on the boot tab and select the OS entry that you want to remove. Click on delete, then click on apply. 
that entry will then be removed from the boot menu. And finally, you can rename the boot entries to something more descriptive. This is useful if you have more than one install of the same OS. For example, if you have two installs of Windows 10, by default they will both be called Windows 10. If you want to distinguish between the two, then you can rename them to something more descriptive. Unfortunately, there is no GUI method for this, but we can do it relatively easily from the command line using the BCD edit tool. Open a command prompt with admin privileges. First, enter BCD edit forward slash enum to get a list of existing boot entries. Make a note of what it says for identifier. So in this example, I'm going to rename the Windows 8.1 entry to Windows 8.1 for gaming. So I'll enter the command bcd edit forward slash set current description and then whatever I want to call it. So Windows 8.1 for gaming. And you should get a confirmation message to say it was successful. I'll also rename the Windows 10 entry, but you'll notice that this one has quite a long identifier to type in. You can either use the copy and paste facility or simply reboot into that OS. And then when you use BC Edit to show the list, the Windows 10 entry will be labeled current, so it's a bit easier to type in. Now they're both renamed, I'll restart the PC to see the new boot menu. So here's the boot menu with the updated names for each OS. Let's boot back into Windows 10 as there's one last thing I want to show you, which is how to increase the capacity of a virtual disk. If you recall from earlier, I recommended that you create a small disk to begin with, as it's easier to increase later if you need more space. So to increase the size of a virtual disk, make sure you boot it into the main parent OS. I'll increase the size of the Windows 8 disk I created earlier, which started out as a 50 gigabyte drive. I now want to increase the capacity of this disk, so I'll open up a command prompt with admin privileges. I'll go into the disk part tool by typing disk part at the command prompt. I'll select the virtual disk I want to increase by entering the command select disk file equals C VHDX Windows 8.VHDX. We should then get confirmation that the disk was successfully selected. Next, I'll increase the disk to 80 gigabytes. We need to specify the size in megabytes, so I'll enter the command expand vdisk maximum equals 80000. We get confirmation that the disk was successfully expanded. Now the disk size has been increased, we need to extend the partition to use the extra space. Let's attach the disk by entering the command attach vdisk. We should get a confirmation message to say the disk was successfully attached. I'll enter the command list volume to get a list of volumes available. I can see my Windows 8 volume is labelled as volume 3, so I'll select that volume by entering the command select volume 3. We should get a message to say the volume is selected. I'll enter the command extend. We should then get a message to say that the volume was successfully extended. We can exit out of disk part and the command prompt and if we look in file explorer we can see the disk is now upgraded to 80 gigabytes or just under. The size is a bit lower because the real size of a megabyte is 1024 bytes. So to be totally accurate we would have needed to increase the disk by 81920 megabytes. Okay I'll restart into the Windows 8 OS and check the disk. Now we're back in Windows 8, let's open File Explorer and check the new disk size. And we can see the disk is now showing as nearly 78 gigabytes. We can also confirm that by looking in the disk management utility. Okay, that's it for this demo. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching and bye for now.